Okay, everybody, I hope you've all enjoyed your fabulous lunch. We're going to go ahead and get the program started. Thank you. All right, well, thank you all for coming. Welcome to the 2017 Cuesta College Awards Luncheon. We're so happy you could join us today. This event today, uh, as it is annually, is hosted by the Cuesta College Foundation. We're so excited to be recognizing our alumni, volunteers, and community members who engage with the college. Um, because we, it is supported by the foundation, I just wanted to take a brief moment and have all of the members of our Cuesta College Foundation board please stand and be recognized. All board members, thank you all so much. These are your community members who represent the whole county, all of the regions of the county, that come out and really represent you in the community. So get to know them if you want to know more about Cuesta and the college. And hopefully one day, if you're not volunteering yet, you will be too. <laughs> well, thanks again for coming. And um, I'm Shannon Hill, the Executive Director of the Foundation and Advancement Offices. And it is my pleasure at this time to introduce our Superintendent President, Dr. Gil Stork, to continue with the program. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon, and uh, welcome to Cuesta College, and for some of you, welcome back. Uh, those of you who uh, are being recognized as um, honored alums today, it's really nice to have you back on campus and to share this special time in history, uh, recognizing uh, what you've accomplished and, um, and what it's like to uh, revisit a place that had an impact on you and all of us. Um, <clears throat> We're here today to uh, honor not only our, our honored alums, but also uh, significant individuals who have volunteered their time and service to support our mission here at Cuesta College. And it's uh, such a, re a re rewarding day for me because it's, uh, it's so special to see what it takes to actually deliver education to the citizens of San Luis Obispo County and beyond. And, it, uh, and we depend so greatly on our massive volunteer service. We have over 1,000 volunteers working on behalf of the college throughout the county. And uh, without, without you, those of you who are present or volunteers, uh, we could not do the job that we're doing. But before we uh, begin the awards, I'd like to acknowledge some special guests today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to recognize um, the, uh, one of the founding fathers of Cuesta College, the first vice president and the uh, second president and superintendent of Cuesta College, Dr. Frank Martinez. <laughs> this is close as I let him get to a mic. Yeah, usually we have a seatbelt on that chair, but. Uh, <laughs> But uh, Frank has been an uh, inspiration to me and many of us uh, as uh, what he created here with Merlin Eisenbeis uh, a long time ago and continues to be a personal mentor to me. Uh, so if I screw up, you know why. <laughs> uh, but he's a dear friend and, uh, and I'm very, very grateful uh, for him. <clears throat> um, also, uh, representing our Board of Trustees today is uh, the president of our Board of Trustees and former employee, Dr. Barbara George. Thank you. And from our neighbors across the street, uh, San Luis Obispo County Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Jim Brescia. <clears throat> From the city of Morro Bay, we have Mayor Jamie Irons. Jamie? There he is, over there. Yeah, thank you. And uh, the newest member of the County Board of Supervisors representing District 1, John Pashong. And also representing uh, the freshman congressman, uh, Carbajal. Uh, it represents us in, in Congress, his representative, Eric, Erica Reyes. Eric is over here. Thank you. <clears throat> so now it's uh, my time to introduce the next introducer. Okay. 
And uh, a good friend, uh, an honored alum from Cuesta College who went on to Cal Poly and graduated and now is a, a force to be reckoned with in the technology world in San Luis County, uh, Tim Williams. Uh, he's the founder and CEO of Digital West, which provides commercial grade internet connectivity and cloud services to businesses. Prior to founding Digital West, Tim managed an internet service provider in uh, San Luis Obispo. It was in this role that he recognized the value of the Central Coast, that the value of the Central Coast holds with the three expanding cable landing uh, stations, all within reach, connecting the U.S. and all of the Pacific Rim. Having grown to a staff of more than 60, uh, Digital West offers co-location, uh, cloud services, and metro fiber via its 50-mile and expanding network. So Tim serves on several non, uh, local nonprofit advisory boards and is currently serving as the vice president of the Cuesta College's Foundation Alumni Committee. So please uh, join me in welcoming Tim Williams. I love it when Dr. Stork introduces me. <laughs> He's always smiling. Um, well, it's a pleasure for me to be here. I also have, uh, before I begin, a few people that I would like to acknowledge as our special guests. Um, our, one of our 2016 honored alumni, John Allen Connerly, is here. Yep, right over here. And also, I believe George Galvin is here, one of our 2013. Yes, there's George there. So the Honored Alumni Awards were established in 1989 to recognize the achievements of former students who have made outstanding professional impacts, served their community, and or served Cuesta College. We as a committee, and as part of the foundation board, we receive nominations from their peers, their families, and friends, and we go through a, uh, a rigorous process uh, to look through all the fantastic nominees that came in and who will be awarding today the, the, or the cream of the crop from this year for 2017. So I'd like to ask Frank Meacham to come up and join me on the stage as I uh, give you some information about Frank Meacham. Okay, Frank, that's it, okay. <laughs> Frank Meacham is a native of San Luis Obispo County and an active member of his co uh, community of Paso Robles. He attended Cuesta College in 1965 and played on Cuesta's first football team. Frank continues to take classes at Cuesta at various points throughout his life in order to increase his writing and public speaking skills, and uh, hopes to take more classes from the North County campus after and during his retirement. Frank is a United States Navy veteran, serving from 1966 to 1970 on active duty, and from 1970 to 72 as a reserve. Although Frank is a licensed electrical engineer, as well as a licensed financial advisor, he's most well known by many of us uh, from his public sector life. Frank started his public career in 1996 as a planning commissioner for the city of Paso Robles. He was elected to the city council of Paso Robles in, 80, in 98, and then the first elected mayor for the city in 2000. He served as mayor for a total of eight years, and in 2007, Frank decided to run for the Board of Supervisors to represent District 1, and successfully won that election in 2008. Taking his office in 2009, Frank served on the Board of Supervisors for a total of eight years. During his time as supervisor, Frank served as a board member for the Twin Cities Community Hospital, Paso Robles High, High School Technology Academy, Nacimento Water Commission, San Luis Obispo County Council of Governments, and he spearheaded the establishment of the city of Paso Robles' first youth commission. Frank has been a tireless advocate for San Luis Obispo County and his community, and, and a, for his county and his community, and a true public servant. He and his wife, Deb, have a combined family of six children and nine grandchildren, as well as two dogs, Jack and Jill. <laughs> as Frank continues his journey into retirement, we'd like to wish him well and recognize him as one of Cuesta College's 2017 Honored Alumni. And Frank, it's my pleasure to introduce you to the 2017 Honored Alums. Well, Dr. Stork told me they were scraping the bottom of the barrel trying to find someone for this, so they went all the way back to 1965. Um, my fondest memories here go to a couple of folks that are sitting at this table. Coach Hansen was my football coach at the time. Ms. McCorkle, when I came back to Cuesta, was my riding instructor and uh, had some great opportunities there. 
And I can't help but mention this at this point in time. My stepson, Tyler Gullison, just graduated from the Navy boot camp in Great Lakes. He went to Cuesta and then went on to uh, Sonoma State. Out of 504 in his division, he ranked number one academically. It's pretty amazing. So this is an honor. I humbled by seeing the names on that wall. I know a lot of those folks that are up there and they've been colleagues and friends for years. Thank you very much for this honor. Our next honored alumnus is Jim Gregory. If Jim could join me on the stage. <laughs> Jim Gregory was raised in Arroyo Grande, along with his brother and two sisters. Upon graduating from Arroyo Grande High School, Jim attended Cuesta College from 1971 to 73 and studied journalism and history. During his time at Cuesta, Jim was the editor of the Questonian, he continued his studies at the University of Missouri, Columbia, where he received his bachelor's degree, and at Cal Poly, where he earned his teaching credential. Before becoming a teacher, Jim was an editor and newspaper reporter. He has also worked, on the research, worked as a research historian to the Slow County Historical Society. Jim taught American literature, modern world literature, cultural anthropology, AP US history, and AP European history for 30 years at Mission College Prep and Arroyo Grande High School. During this time teaching at Arroyo Grande High School, Jim was the advisor to the Interact Service Club, the youth connection to Rotary International, raising funds for a variety of international projects, including lab equipment for schools in Uganda, defibrillators for pediatric hospitals in Honduras, and wheelchairs for disabled students in central Mexico. Jim has led several student trips to Europe, as well as taught teen workshop at the Central Coast Writers Conference at Cuesta College. Jim was awarded the Lucia Mar Unified School District Teacher of the Year in 2010 and 11, or for the 2010-11 year. Since his retirement in 2015, Jim has written two books on South County history, World War II Arroyo Grande and Patriot Graves, Discovering a California Town's Civil War Heritage. Jim is married to Elizabeth, a teacher and campus minister at St. Joseph High School in Santa Maria, and the father of two sons, John and Thomas. Jim, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2017 Honored Alumni. It's wonderful to have an audience. <laughs> I retired two years ago, and, I, and, and uh, we only live a mile from the high school. So when the bell goes off, I'll start lecturing about the 30 years war. <laughs> We have two Irish setters in a Basset Hound, and they, they don't seem interested at all. <laughs> One of the reasons I became a teacher is, is my experience at Cuesta in the 1970s. I had superb teachers. Uh, Gene Shelton comes to mind. He was my speech teacher, helped me overcome my fear of audiences. Uh, uh, Lee Bedell taught uh, literature, and uh, I will forever remember his line readings of uh, Henry IV, Part I which became one of my favorite Shakespeare plays for all the dirty parts. <laughs> Bob Tomlinson was our journalism teacher, and uh, not only did I learn how to express myself, how to organize my thoughts, uh, but in the process of working for the Questonian, I learned a lot about integrity. And even Ginger the cafeteria lady was part of my education at Cuesta. She did a drop-dead Mae West imitation and she referred to everybody as darling. So I learned how to treat people with kindness from Ginger the Cafeteria Lady. Cuesta, when I went here, was a poverty-stricken uh, place in terms of physical facilities. But it, it was then, and it still is today, extremely wealthy in its people. Thank you very much. Our third honored alumnus is Ted Emrick. So Ted, if you could please join me on the stage. <laughs> Ted
Ted Emmerich was born and raised in Solana Beach near San Diego. Beginning his time at Cuesta in 1981, Ted holds three associate degrees from Cuesta College, one in general studies, one in two-dimensional art, and one in three-dimensional art, as well as a Bachelor's of Fine Arts degree from San Francisco's Art Institute, which he achieved via a full-ride scholarship he won uh, from the Morro Bay Art Society. Today, Ted resides in Los Osos, where he runs a large art studio that occasionally hosts other well-known artists. He is a contemporary multimedia painter and sculptor who uses anything and everything to create art. Ted's work has been highly sought after, not only by renowned collectors, but also galleries throughout the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Additionally, his works have been purchased by Apple Computers, Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, the Berkeley Library, Chicago International Airport, and more. Ted divides his time between his art and his community. He has been involved with Surfing for Hope, Amp Surf, Art Legacy Project, Native Plant Garden Project, and the Morro Bay High School Soccer Program, as well as his own nonprofit, BeGreen.org, dedicated to, to guiding others to a greener, more environmentally conscious life. Ted is the father to one daughter, Sierra, who is earning her degree in environmental science at UCSB. Ted, it's my honor to introduce you and welcome you to the 2017 Honored Alumni. I'm very grateful for Cuesta College and the opportunities it's given me, the people and the whole community. Um, I'm very grateful for my mother, Joy Cantwell, my brother, Jeff Emmerich, and Bailey over here, um, and the opportunity to just serve and be with the community. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> everybody, and uh, really appreciate the uh, the progress and the and the advantage that you took of Cuesta College and what you've done with that advantage. So, <clears throat> all right, and now we're on to our first uh, volunteer award, and this award is uh, in honor of Dr. Frank Martinez. This is the Dr. Frank Martinez Superintendent President's Award. Uh, this award was first uh, given in 2001, and the award is given in recognition of the accomplishments of a community volunteer who has contributed their time and talent to Cuesta College. This year's recipient of the Dr. Frank Martinez Superintendent Presence Award is Dee Lacey. So Dee, will you please uh, join me on stage? <laughs> So Dee is currently a, a member of the Cuesta College Foundation Board of Directors and serves as its Vice President of Membership. She is an active fundraiser for the college's North County campus and serves on many boards throughout the county, including Capslow Community Action Partnership, Heritage Oaks Bank, the California Mid-State Fair, San Luis Obispo County uh, found, Community Foundation, honorary member of the Paso Robles Children's Museum, she serves as president of ACORN, which is raising funds for the Paso Robles Library and Recreation Center, and has co-owned Lacey Livestock since 1963. Dee is also the past president of the Paso Robles Chamber of Commerce and the San Luis Obispo Community Foundation, and a past board member of the Paso Robles Library Foundation, Twin Cities Hospital, and the San Luis Obispo County Farm Bureau. She served on the Paso Robles School District a board of trustees for 20 years, and then she jumped ship and joined Cuesta College as a trustee uh, back in a four-year term. Uh, she's also a founding member of RAC, Inc., and continues to serve on, on the Community Foundation Scholarship Committee and the Women's Legacy Fund. Dia served as the SLO County and Cattlewomen's Pres President, being named Cattlewoman of the Year in 1992, Woman of Achievement in 1995, and it also awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award in Education in 2000. She has served the cattle industry as the chair of the National Cattlemen's Beef Board 
and was named Cattlemen of the Year in 2005 by the San Luis Obispo County Cattlemen's Association. Cuesta is extremely grateful for all that Dee has done, not only for Cuesta College, but for all of us that live in San Luis Obispo County. Your dedication and support to Cuesta is why you're here today, and it's my honor to present to you the 2017 Dr. Frank Martinez Superintendent President's Award. Thank you. I was going to share the mic with Frank, but um, after what you said, he wouldn't come up. Yeah. <laughs> you heard his feelings about the mic. Um, all of those things that he read, um, so many of you have been involved <clears throat> in the same things. You know, you only pass this way once, so you try to do as much good as you can do. And when you live in a community like we live in, there's always something in need. I ran into a woman who had moved to Paso Robles about three years ago, and we were talking the other day, and she said, you know, it's, I'm just so bored, I don't know what to do, and it was all I could do not to choke her <laughs> down. And so I started, I went to my phone, and I started flipping through to give her the names of people um, that I know that run organizations, are executive directors, and need volunteers, and I said, you know, here they are, get your pencil out, and you'll know who to contact. Uh, one of the things that was left off on my list is um, I'm on the board for Studios in the Park, and some of my friends came. Uh, we do programs for uh, children in our community in North County so that they, uh, they realize that they have art in them. Um, but for Cuesta, after I got off the school board in Paso, I thought 20 years that was plenty. And my kids were already long gone, and I was still on the school board, but I couldn't give up foot, my football tickets. So I, I thought, you know, but we were so determined that we wanted a North County campus that my friends kind of talked me into running because uh, trustees had to run countywide, and they said, because you've been in agriculture, you have friends that will vote for you in other areas. But our determination was that we were going to have a North County campus. So I did win the election, and the first, before I was seated, I came to a board meeting, and um, the president of the Cuesta board asked me if I wanted to say a few words. So uh, Gil was a vice president then, Grace was president, and um, Warren was in the audience, and I went up and I said, well, I have two goals, and I usually get what I want, and I work very hard to make sure it happens. And I said, the first one is we want a North County campus, and the second one is we want football back at Cuesta. Uh, Gil just about passed out. Grace uh, was beside herself. And, uh, and, and I, it, it was a message from Greg Welch and Frank Meacham. So I, and, and they love to go around saying that they've been undefeated since 1977, so <laughs> when football left. But, um, but the next wonderful moment was that my friends in North County said to uh, the president of the college, we can do this. And if you build it, they will come. And uh, we, uh, we found the property, and we made the move, and we have a wonderful campus in North County. Frank tells me that at the very one of the first board me meetings ever for this uh, college district, they decided that there would be three campuses, the central one, one in the north, and one in the south. So I'm challenging the people in the south to join up the way we did and reach out to your neighbors and say, this is, an, this is such an important thing to offer up to our community. My last, and, and then the other, you know, when we put the shovel in the ground and it really was going to happen, um, it was just I don't think anything in my life was quite like, you know, we really did get it done. The other two things that happen that make me uh, swell with pride about Cuesta is Sandy McLaughlin, who was the dean, the first dean of the North County, decided that we would have a graduation of the first students that had gone through Cuesta North County. And uh, she said, would you like to come and give the diplomas? And we're going to have ACE special graduation ceremony in the North County, and I did. So I was there, and a young man came up, and he said, do you remember me, Mrs. Lacey? And I looked at him, and I said, George Lopez. And he said, yes, you gave me my high school uh, diploma when I graduated from Paso. And I said, I remember that. 
and he said, um, you're going to give my wife her diploma tonight. We have three children, and she never had the opportunity to go to school and would not have been able to go over the grade. And he said, without this campus, she wouldn't be able to do what she's done. She not only got that, she went on to Poly, and she's a teacher. So it, I thought, that is why we built it. The other thing is that I volunteer as an ambassador, and at North County, the first day of the semester of each year, we go, of each semester, we go and we greet students. And I get to sit there with my Cuesta apron, and I've got parking passes, and I have the map out, and I know where everything is on that campus, and they come, and they're lost, and they don't, you know, uh, they don't know where they're going, how, and you get to... I'm going to tell you how to find it. I'm going to help you fill this out. This is how you do an ad. This is how you don't. And so uh, it renews for me every semester when I get to do this, how important Cuesta is in people's lives and the difference it makes. And I'm really, truly honored to get this award, especially in Frank's name. You all know we love him dearly. And um, he... He not only brings humor to things, but his dedication over the years is what's inspired so many of us to stay dedicated to Cuesta. Thank you. That was great. She tried to escape, but I wouldn't let her go out there. So, <laughs> so we've, we've recognized some of our honored alumni, but we all know that those alumni started once as students. And so it's my pleasure to be introducing our next award, volunteer, our, our award winners, which are uh, for the John Schaub Student Volunteer Award. And this year it was so hard for the decision to be made that we're actually recognizing two students today. The John Schaub Student Volunteer Award, the award is given out to a student or students whose community volunteer work exemplifies the high standards established by Cuesta College's first dean of students, John Schaub, and he was known as an innovator of student success throughout the state. This year we have two recipients. Mia Alexander is our first one we'll recognize today. Mia, will you please join me up on stage? All right. Hi, Mia. Hi. Mia Alexander is a second-year Cuesta College student who aspires to open her own residential program in San Luis Obispo County, and which will offer services to women who suffer from addiction. The Alpha Gamma Sigma member volunteers 50 hours a week as the house manager for the nonprofit organization Griffin Society Gate Help Incorporated, a sober living home for men and women. Additionally, she volunteers at the food bank for Hunger Awareness Day activities and also at the Royal Grande Strawberry Festival. Her nominator said in her uh, application, Mia's service distinguishes itself beyond normal service due to her passion for helping others, diversity in services and those served, and the impressive quality of volunteer hours she selflessly donated to the campus and the community. Mia, it is my honor to present you with the 2017 John Schaub Student Volunteer Award. I want to first off thank Danae Boggs and Dr. Stork for this opportunity, and I want to thank my family, excuse me, for coming out and supporting me. Um, this is a huge, huge thing for me. I came from a um, real rough background, and um, volunteering in the community has really helped me to find a purpose in life. And um, I plan to go to Cal Poly and to uh, focus in nonprofit and um, to continue giving back to a community that I. Um, I'm now a productive member of society, and so this is real huge for me, and it's an honor, and I appreciate you guys all coming out. Thank you. I forgot to mention that there is an endowment fund that she gets a little check for it, just to say thank you from our friends at Cuesta College. Hopefully that doesn't make her cry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, our, second, uh, not our second award winner is Gabriela Perez. Gabriela, will you come up? <laughs> well, 
welcome. Thanks. All right, Gabriella is a first generation student, college student from Paso Robles, studying sociology at Cuesta College. She's aspiring to be a social worker. She gives back to the college by volunteering at student service oriented events and assisting students at the cafe, which Cafe Center is the CalWORKs Foster Youth and EOPS and Care area. So that really is critical in making sure that our students who really need an extra hand have one, and she's there always to hand one out to them. In addition, she volunteers with Coats for Kids, Miracle Miles for Kids, Walk for Arthritis, and the Food Bank. Her nominator stated that Gabby is selfless with her time and a great example of what it means to be a volunteer in your community. Gabrielle, it is my honor to present you with the 2017 John Schaub Student Volunteer Award. I want to say thank you to Julianne for nominating me, and it's an honor to be here, and I love helping my community. Our next award is uh, named in honor of the other founding father of Cuesta College, Dr. Merlin E. Eisenbeis. This is the uh, award given to uh, the volunteer in the classroom. The Merlin E. Eisenbeis Service in the Classroom Award recognizes direct volunteer service in the classroom or, or school activity which extends our ability to help students. The 2017 uh, Merlin E. Eisenbeis Service in the Classroom Award goes to Marcus Zaitzis Despuentes. Come in, please. Marcus. <laughs> He's a shy man. A self-employed practicing architect and Cal Poly graduate, uh, Marcus, is, his true passion is coaching sports teams. Currently in his eighth year as head coach for the Associated Students of Cuesta College men's soccer club team, uh, <clears throat> Marcus will also coach, uh, he also serves the assistant coach for our women's intercollegiate uh, soccer team and uh, that works in the fall. In total, Marcus has co been coaching for the past 30 years, the majority at the high school and college level. His nominator states, Marcus is extremely positive and respectful with the student athletes, and I can't think of anyone more deserving of this award than him. So Marcus, thank you for all that you do on behalf of our students, and it's my honor to present to you the 2017 Merlin E. Eisen by Service in the Classroom Award. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, President Stork. Appreciate it. Um, I also wanted to listen to a lot of the uh, honorees today. It's uh, it's wonderful, kind of going back in history, and 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 so many of the the people that have been honored today have touched have touched Cuesta in such in similar ways that my I uh, that it, it touched me as well. Um, I graduated from Moray Grande High School in '73 and ended up at Cuesta in 74 and 75. And I, I was listening to Mr. Gregory talk, talking about how Cuesta was then. I remember taking my, uh, my first speech class, probably with the same instructors he had as well. And we'll see if it benefited me right now. But, but, the, <laughs> but the point was, what, what I did remember was that, and I, I'm currently taking a class right now here at, at uh, Cuesta, uh, an AutoCAD class, believe it or not, interesting as an architect, but, uh, and I remember, I remember taking this speech class there and being in these little small little barracks out there, and I remember my brother and I in this class, and I remember a cow walking into our class. <laughs> and it's like, Quest has changed so substantially. <laughs> the cows are still around, but at least they're not walking to our classrooms. I wanted to um, take this just a, a few minutes and talk a little bit about the team. Um, I've been now coaching here with, at Quest now for about eight years, and it's, uh, 
The Quest Women's Soccer Team is a group of young gentlemen that there's, I think there's like 35 of us now in the club. And uh, there is a huge passion about the game of soccer. And I see a lot of people here that, I see Mr. Brescia here has I've actually got to coach uh, his daughter as well. So I've, I've touched a lot of, had the opportunity to touch a lot of um, young, what now are adults, as part of um, this whole area. And these guys play this game. They're so passionate about the beautiful game. It's, um, with 35 members, we're almost as big as the baseball team. So it's huge. It's very huge. And if, if we were at some point, not to put any pressure on the athletic department, but if we ever had an opportunity to become something larger than a club team, that would be a wonderful thing. We would have more than 35 people, I'm sure, at that point. Um, to say something a little about the team, we, we travel up and down California. We play, we've played teams against San Diego State University, uh, UCLA. We tied UCLA two weeks back. Um, so, and the other thing too is that we, we're in a, um, a league that represents about 100 different uh, colleges. We are the only two-year community college out of 100. Four years, four-year schools, universities, state colleges, and we're the small guys. So when we walk on the field, we're always the underdogs. And I love that. I love that. And we prove them wrong many a time. My involvement started about eight years ago. And to, be, to, to coach at the collegiate level is a, a really great opportunity. And now having that, that opportunity, also coaching with the divisional women's team, has been a, a real honor as well. But to really to teach them, teach these young adults life lessons, to teach them about responsibility, discipline, personal, personal health, communication. Now they have to deal with somebody that says, no, you're not, you're not going to play, or whatever the case may be, to deal with us and be able to face us as, as an adult. Those life lessons are m so much more than just play, kicking a stupid ball around in a field. So... That's, what, that's what, what I'm here for, is to have that opportunity to teach those life lessons, to mentor those young, young adults, teach them all those life lessons through this little medium we call soccer. It's just a wonderful opportunity. I also wanted to um, thank Sherry Moore. I think she was the one that was actually responsible to, of nominating for me. Um, I've been in the program for eight years, but she was, she's been here. Sherry, please stand. Uh, she's been here since the onset of the club, and I've known about the club for probably 12 years, so it may be more than that. Um, and without her, she is the conduit between administration. She is the one that keeps me on the straight and narrow when it comes to the ins and outs of administration and so forth. And she has such huge responsibility with that, with all the, the amount of uh, young men that come through the program. And I want to thank you very much, Sherry, for nominating me. I appreciate it. Um, I know this is a service award, and I almost feel bad about taking it. I was talking to President Stork about it. I said, I almost feel bad about doing it, because I'm doing exactly what I love, love doing. Thank you very much. Thanks for recognizing me. All right, well, I, don't, I guess people knew Bob Mariucci was in the audience, and so they're lobbying him quite heavily today. Um, I think that y there's better chance to get men's soccer than football, I'm guessing. I'm, I'm, I think I can speak for Bob on that one. <laughs> All right, so our next award and our final award is the Betty Nielsen Volunteer of the Year Award. This award is given in memory of Trustee Betty Nielsen, whose volunteerism was known throughout the county and beyond. This year's recipients of the Betty Nielsen Volunteer of the Year Award are Ken and Darlene Kellett. Would you please come up? We'll be continuing our athletics-themed awards. <laughs> 
with, with the Kellets. The Kellets have been supporting the Cuesta College Booster Club for many years. Darlene began serving on the Booster Club board in the 1970s and has been volunteering to support the college's 15, maybe 16, intercollegiate teams and student athletics since then. Ken joined the Booster Club more recently. Doesn't that always happen? Like if a spouse is in, you gotta get pulled into. Um, and once the couple retired as owners of DNK Packaging, According to their nominator, the Kellett's genuine love and support of Cuesta College Athletics is evident through their dedication and the commitment to serving on the Booster Club board. With that, I would like to say congratulations to Ken and Darlene on the Betty Nielsen Volunteer of the Year Award for 2017. I guess I got nominated to talk, too. Um, she was having so much fun on the boosters. I thought, well, I, I have to get in on this too. So, and it's fun being around all the the college kids, and it's just fun. They're all good kids, meeting great people, and I'd like to thank Bob for uh, nominating us. But it's it, it's worth it's worth it just being around all the kids. And I'm really glad to hear that football's still being talked about. <laughs> <laughs> Soccer wasn't much when I was growing up, but football was, so <laughs> anyway. But thank you all, thanks. Around uh, February 2010, <clears throat> after I had uh, agreed to come back and serve as the interim uh, president, I was appearing on a on KPRL um, talk show, and uh, so I was talking with the uh, with the the uh, announcer, and all of a sudden he said, "Okay, we're going to open the lines for phone calls now." So ring, ring. Phone picks up, and I knew the voice right away. And it was Frank Meacham. <laughs> I have one question to you, Mr. President. When are you bringing back football? <laughs> it was a classic setup, you know. It was, uh, because as soon as I heard his voice, oh, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, speaking of football, uh, four weeks from today in this room, we're having the very first uh, football reunion of Cuesta College. Uh, it'll be, uh, the last season was 1977, and so we're 13 years of uh, action here at Cuesta College, and um, since I started as a football coach here in 1967, I thought, we can't let this thing end without having a reunion, so it's uh, ramping up, and we're really excited about it. So Warren and I, as, as co-coaches, and Warren was the head coach, and I was his assistant, and we have and other assistant coaches coming back from Iowa and Oregon and, and different places, but it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's part of Quest's history, and uh, so we're really looking forward to it. I had to realize, though, just like going to a class reunion, and you walk in, and you're, in your mind, you, you remember what the person looked like when they were 18 years old or 17. Well, now I have to put this thing in, in image now. So I'm still thinking of these guys wearing green and, you know, but now I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. If they played on the very last team, which was in 1977, and they were a freshman, let's see, that they were probably 18 or 19. They're almost 60 years old now, you know? And all be, they'll all be ARP eligible. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so, so it's going to be interesting uh, if I recognize anybody or they recognize me. So anyway. Anyway, we're having a great time, and this part of the wonderful part of being a, in the Cuesta family is, is all that we get to experience day in, day out. And to our students who are here, um, you're, you're going to be part of that legacy of Cuesta College and be able to look back at your experience and say, wow, what a difference it was attending Cuesta College. And all the people like Gene Sheldon and Lee Bedell that touched uh, people's lives and made a difference um, in terms of their ability to find a pathway and be successful is what it's all about. There's no greater challenge than teaching in a community college because we accept everybody 
no matter what stage of life they're in, no matter what condition, no matter what desire, no matter what economic status they are, and we're in charge of helping them find a way and be successful. But there's no greater opportunity than anywhere to help change lives, and that's what makes it so special. And what makes it also so special is for people like you who have come forth to be part of the Quest of Family, to generate your time and, and gifts of time, your contributions to the foundation or to other special programs, all make it worthwhile. So let me just say thank you to all of you. I want to congratulate all of our award winners. Your time, talent, and treasures have helped so many of our staff and students, and we are forever grateful for your volunteerism and your support to the college. Now, we have one more surprise. So look in your program, and if you have a sticker inside your program, anybody have a sticker? You have a sticker? Then you get the centerpiece. You get to take home the centerpiece. All right. So thank you all for attending. <laughs>